All right, so we've covered a lot of material this semester, uh, and my hope is that you're learning a few new things uh, and a few new insights into the realm of labor economics and the decisions that different people make, right? I also hope that, that you're developing uh, a framework that you can apply to your own life about whether or not to work and for how long you should work. And so this week, uh, we're going to begin discussing the question of, of which industry, occupation, or, or firm or company uh, in which you should, where you should work, right? In other words, <clears throat> we're going to assume that you've already decided to work, and now we're trying to decide where specifically uh, you want to work. <clears throat> and so this week's notes discuss how uh, recurring job characteristics will influence your decisions about where to work. And so some of these things are, are fairly obvious, you know, so, you know, do you get along uh, with your colleagues? Right? Or do you hate them? Right? Uh, what about, like, the risk of industry, uh, injury? Risk of injury. Right? Or uh, what about, like, employee benefits? Right, <clears throat> and so in some, and then what we'll also do, uh, what we're also going to talk about today is attempts to sort of regulate like these good things, so like employee benefits and, and safe working environments. We're going to talk about uh, attempts to regulate these things into uh, existence, as well as attempts to regulate you know bad things, unsafe working environments, and you know poor benefits and such uh, out of existence. So we're going to talk about what happens when you regulate these things too. Okay. Uh, we'll also be uh, discussing job matching and the role of worker preference and information. <clears throat> right? So if you think about it, when I say you know job matching, right? when I say the phrase job matching, it sounds like this is sort of an active process where there is like someone there who's saying, you know, okay, Susie, you go here, and Billy, you go over here, and you know, uh, uh, Jane, you come over here with Billy, and you know, Bobby, you go with with Susie, and such like that. Right? It sounds like I'm saying that there is someone there uh, who is directing, you know, employees in certain directions and into certain fields. Okay, and and that's not really what we're talking about. Okay, but it is important to note uh, that in some fields this does exist. So in the medical field, for example, there is uh, a thing called matching. Right? And so I'll put a link up to uh, a, uh, an interview with a guy named Al Roth, uh, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics for uh, matching, right, basically. He's the, one, he's the one that if you are pre-med or something like that, he's the reason why you have to do uh, the match. Okay, so you'll understand the match and you'll understand what's going on. But for the rest of you uh, that don't have to go through the match, you know, feel free to skip the Al Roth thing. Or listen to it if you plan on going to graduate school, uh, especially in economics. Okay, uh, but what we're talking about here in general, with the exception of the medical field, right? When we talk about job matching, we're sort of talking about uh, what we could call an emergent outcome uh, of individuals who are pursuing their own plans and agendas, and how this can be properly understood. So a guy uh, who I happen to be a really big fan of, his name is Richard Wagner. Uh, and I wrote my dissertation under him, so I'll admit I'm fully biased. I think he's the best, one of the best economists alive today. Uh, he uses sort of the image of a parade uh, versus like a piazza, uh, but you can think of it as a college campus. So think of the difference between like a parade and people walking in a parade and people walking uh, on a college campus. Okay, so if you think about like people wa like watching a parade, right, uh, you could readily recognize the order that this parade creates. Okay? There's one person at the front uh, who's in charge of where everyone goes, and this person leads the parade around a predetermined route through a city. Right? Uh, but if you look at like a college campus, uh, you'll see something that looks like order, but there's no one in charge of telling you, you know, where to walk and when to walk. Right? And so just like in, in a parade, you know, no one bumps into each other because the order has been predetermined and is sort of like planned, right? It's, it's planned, it's top down, the parade is, no one's gonna bump into each other in the parade because they've pre-planned where they're all going to be. 
But at the same time, you guys are able to walk across a college campus without bumping into each other, right? Because you can make little minor adjustments here and there as you see people coming up to you, right? And so both of these create a sort of order, but one is planned, the parade, and the other one is unplanned, the piazza, or walking across the college campus. Or another way to sort of thinking about this is to think about how we said, you know, Paris and New York City get fed uh, despite the fact that nobody's in charge of this, right? When we, if you think back to weeks one and two, right? Cities, people get fed despite the fact that there's no one in charge of the entire uh, feeding people process, okay? So when we, when we talk about job matching, we're going to talk about sort of the unplanned order uh, that emerges uh, as a result of, of people sort of doing their own thing uh, instead of a sort of, um, a sort of a central plan or central or imposed plan, right? <clears throat> and so the point here is, is that, you know, people tend to find jobs on their own uh, without having to receive direct orders from anyone. So we're able to do it without someone having to tell us what job to do. And it turns out most people are not miserable or don't hate their jobs, right? Some people do, and we'll talk about that, okay? Uh, but for the most part, everyone gets like the best job they could possibly get. And so we'll talk some more about that uh, in the rest of this, of this week's notes.